Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm taking a look at Everest Backup. Everest is a relatively new backup migration plugin that's available for WordPress. In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the free version of Everest Backup, and I'll show you what additional features you get with the pro version. At the end, there'll be some discussion and conclusions. I'll mention that Everest Backup has been on my watch list, and it just popped up the other day on AppSumo. So if you happen to catch this video while the AppSumo deal is going on, then you might be able to get some extra savings. Otherwise, the video is going to give you a walkthrough of the free version and an overview of the features for the pro version. So first, here's Everest Backup in the WordPress plugin directory. And this is one of those plugins where you start with the free version and then the pro version adds additional features. So you can see that it's kept up to date. It has more than 3,000 active installs. It looks like it first entered the WordPress plugin directory maybe two years ago. I think the pro version is much newer. It's got 29 five-star reviews. And it's got one out of one support issue resolved in the past two months. The company behind Everest Backup has a forms plugin and they also sell themes. Here's the themes website and here's the Everest Backup website. So if we look at the features, you can backup, restore, migrate, schedule, cloud integration. You can save your backups to your local server, and then there are add-ons for cloud storage providers. Google Drive is free, and there's also a free plugin which will allow you to upload a larger file size, I think up to a gigabyte. Okay, then there's Pro, which we'll look at the Pro features in just a minute. But the other cloud storage options are Dropbox, OneDrive, pCloud, Amazon S3, Backblaze, and then there's an unlimited uploads and restore feature, which removes the backup and restore limits. If we go and we look at the pricing, they have $59 for two websites, $79 for 21 websites, and $129 for 99 websites. If we go down a little bit further, here is where we see the difference between the free and the pro. If we go down here to the pro features, there's unlimited uploads and rollback file size, advanced reporting, flexible schedule options, Amazon S3 integration, Dropbox, pCloud, OneCloud, and Backblaze. More notification options. The encrypt and password protect backup files. The asterisk means that's a roadmap item. You have the option to trigger backups when WordPress core is updated or plugins or themes are updated. And also when a WooCommerce order is completed. So those are kind of cool options and there is differential backup, which is another roadmap item. Staging site is another roadmap item, and you have the option to clean unused images from backup files. Those are the pro features. As I said, Everest was on my watch list, so I noticed it showed up on AppSumo at the beginning of the week, and I bought a couple of codes we go down and look at the deal, basically you get pro and you get all of the cloud storage options and any future ones that they add. It's three websites for $29, 10 for 58 and 25 for 87. So this is pretty inexpensive. There is an option you can stack another code here for 50 websites. If you need a license for more than 50 sites, I saw a comment that indicated you could try reaching out to support and maybe they could help you. I don't know what that would entail. When I redeemed my AppSumo coupons, there was a screen that showed me the pro version and all of the add-ons. There was a download link and there were license keys. I also got an email with that same information. I was not able to log in though to the Everest site and I suspect that they don't have that set up yet for AppSumo sales. 
So that would be an inconvenience, and I hope that's something they're able to correct right away. That didn't stop me, though, because I did download and have the keys. Let's go to a test site now. I have here a test site where I've got some custom post types for books and authors. This is the free cadence theme here. And here are the plugins. You see, I just have Metabox and Metabox all in one. Here are the books and authors. Here are the Metabox menus here. So I want to move this website now. And I'm going to try putting it on a local site that I have set up using MAMP. Okay, so let's see how Everest works. Okay, here's Everest Forms, Everest Backup. Okay. And I'll activate it. All right, and we get a new menu item here. So options to upgrade. You can back up. Let's look at that. So here you can disable items like say you don't want media files or you don't want the database or you only want the database in this backup. Okay, our only location now is the local web server. You can add an optional tag that, that gets included in the file name. And then here is scheduling a backup. You can have it daily, weekly, monthly, pick a time, I don't have any remote location set up. Okay, again, you can give it a custom tag and you have your include, exclude items there. And the option to send an email. If we go to restore menu. Here you can upload files. There is a direct restore option. It will start restoring as soon as you upload the file. And here are files that you've already uploaded. We don't have any yet. Migration and clone. If you've already made a backup file, here's where you'd pick it, and then you could generate a migration key, and this is used in the site-to-site -site migration feature, which we'll look at in a minute. And then clone, this is where you actually initiate the site-to-site -site migration by adding the key and clicking verify, and we'll see that in a few minutes. Okay, history. This is actually an important screen because your backups are going to show up here and you'll have some options. We'll look at those in a minute. We have logs, we have settings. Okay, so this is where the email gets sent to if you want an email after the backup is done and you can change this, but by default it brings in the WordPress admin, your tags, how many days you wanna keep the backup. Zero means don't delete it. But if you wanted to keep it for seven days, you could put a seven there. You can enter file extensions here for files that get excluded from the backup. Delete the backup file after restore. And then the speed of the backup and restore. You can throttle it down if you're on hosting that doesn't have many resources. Here you would set up your cloud options. Here's information available about your server if you need to contact support. These are the add-ons here. All right, so let's go to the backup tab. Okay, I'm going to give it a tag and do backup now. We can open the little console to see it move along. It's kind of cool. Okay, so we can download the file or generate a migration key. So this is going to be for if we want the backup, you know, on our local hard drive, on our computer. And this you use if you want to do a site-to-site -site migration, which is something we'll look at. I'm not going to do either one of those here. I'm just going to X out, go to history, and here you see you have that same option, okay? So if you miss that little pop-up, you're not out of luck. I'm going to download it here and just save it to my downloads directory. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I have a new website and this is the 2023 theme. I'm just gonna log into that. I wanted to show you this is on local. Let's see, wptest.local. Let's go to plugins. We'll get rid of these because we don't need them. Let's install the Everest backup plugin. 
Okay. All right, so I'm going to go down here now to restore. You see there are no files here yet. So let's select our file. And let's click restore. We'll log back in. Okay, let's go to permalinks and save. And here's our cadence theme now with our custom post types. And here's our Metabox plugins. Okay, so it did the migration for us here. One thing I want to do just to test here. So I'm going to do better search and replace and check and see if it updated all the URLs. Okay, so I'm going to go to tools, better search and replace. Now our source site was on InstaWP. So I'm just going to search for this to make sure that it updated all of the you know, file names and URLs. So zero instances of Insta were found. It did a good job of updating everything. That's very awesome. There's one other thing I want to try, and that is that going back to our original site here, I'm going to copy this key again. Now, this manual migration I did onto, you know, this was onto my local machine. I see this option with Everest. Uh, I'm wondering if I can do a site to site migration. So this is another clean site. It's also on InstaWP, so they're both online. I'm guessing that's going to be required for a site-to-site -site migration. So let's go to Migrate Clone. I'm going to paste in the key. I have not uploaded the file, and it's identified this. Okay, so I'm going to clone it. Okay, so we log in. All right, we've cloned the site, site to site online. This is target site, Insta WP, and here we have Everest testing, Instant WP. Pretty cool in the free version here. That's a nice feature, and I'm impressed. There's one more thing that I thought I should show you. You know, I'm back to my local site. I've installed the pro version of Everest Backup. And what I wanted to do is just show you what's different in the UI screens. So here we go. This looks the same. But here, it used to just be daily, weekly, monthly. We have this hourly option now. Okay, so we could back up every hour if we wanted to. And then we also have this new tab for automatic backup. And so this lets us back up before core updates, plugin updates, or theme updates. So those are new features. Nothing new under Restore, Migrate Clone, History Logs. If we go to Settings, we now have the option to exclude thumbnails. Enable to only include original full-size images and exclude image thumbnails generated while by WordPress while taking the backup. This will decrease the backup size. So that's interesting. These two tabs are the same. Last thing here, if we go to add-ons, it shows us the add-ons that we have active here. And as before, you can install and activate the free ones, or there's a link to buy the pro ones. So anyway, those are the changes that we get to these menus and options when we install the pro version. Okay, so we've had our walkthrough of the free version and a look at the pro features. 
Now for some discussion and conclusions. Let's start with pros and cons. One con is that the code redemption process didn't create an account on the website as I would have expected when I was redeeming the AppSumo coupons. I think if you buy on their website, it probably works as you expected it would. But not having access to your account information is an inconvenience. If you need to change the license on a site or something, currently I think you need to contact support. So hope they can address that right away. Another thing, I didn't mention it in the video, but you might have noticed that the backup files had some kind of Everest type of extension. So it's a proprietary file format. And I noticed in comments on the AppSumo page that they mentioned that they're going to add the option to backup in zip file format so that it's more accessible. The third con is that they don't yet have an incremental backup option that's on the roadmap. And while incremental backups can make it harder and slower to restore a site, incremental backups also save disk space. So I think they're generally thought to be worthwhile. Pros, you saw that the backups and restores were pretty fast. These are small websites, but I didn't speed up or trim out the backup and restore process. What you saw was the real time. The manual backup option, you know, copying the file manually to a server and restoring it, that worked as expected. And then the site-to-site -site backup is way cool, and that's a feature in the free version, which I think is very nice. Overall, I found the interface a little easier to navigate than WP Vivid backup, which can be a little confusing, so it didn't take long to figure it out. And as we saw, the free version worked well in our tests. Now, the pro features will be needed if you have larger sites, if you need a cloud storage option other than Google Drive, or you want to use any of the other pro features like backups for WordPress updates or more frequent backups. If you're watching the video during the AppSumo deal, then you have the option to grab the pro version at a pretty good price. If, however, you're watching the video after the AppSumo deal has passed, then the walkthrough of features of the free version and a look at the features of the pro version can help you evaluate if you need the pro version. As always, there's a text summary of the video available on the WebTNG website. And I hope that you got some value out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference. Thank you for watching.